So the other day, a friend and former student of mine sent me a message asking about this TIG spot welder attachment thing found on Amazon and wanted to know if it was legit. And I kind of laughed about it because I remember there's a trick that you can use to turn any TIG welder into a spot welder and you don't even need special tools. I mean, you already have the pieces. So after having shown him how it was done, I figured, why don't I show you guys? I'm Justin, welcome to Weld Coach. It's Weld Coach, your personal welding instructor, anywhere. There are typically two styles of spot welds in the welding world that most people know and acknowledge. The first one is done with a dedicated machine. You can usually find this machine in the automotive or the HVAC industries. When power is applied, resistance creates centralized heat in the sheet metal and the clamping pressure squishes the metals together. The second type is commonly known as a plug weld, where the piece to be joined with the bottom piece has a hole in it. Typically, a MIG welder shoots at the center of the hole to heat it up and begin filling the bottom piece as it is moved outward and circular to join it with the edges of the upper piece. This is most commonly used in auto body repairs. But if you only have a TIG welder and a limited budget, you can easily make a spot weld using this very simple trick. Step one, grab a sacrificial TIG cup. A number five usually works best for me, and I've got a lot of them laying around. Also grab a collet body and a cutoff wheel on a grinder. Secure the collet body to a vise and screw the cup on. Whatever you do, do not try and clamp the cup down all by itself without being screwed onto something. Cups are not designed to handle any kind of external clamping pressure. Next, you want to cut a small slit across the opening, at least a quarter inch or six millimeters deep. Now you do kind of have to be a little bit patient when you do this and let the wheel do all the work. Otherwise the cup might shatter if you're like a little bit too aggressive on it or whatever the case is. But if it doesn't shatter, you're good to go. Next step is to screw the cup back onto the torch the regular way and install a piece of tungsten that is unsharpened or flat faced. There should be absolutely no stick out at all in this tungsten actually. It's gonna be slightly sucked into the cup, roughly a 16th of an inch or about 1.6 millimeters. I usually press my fingertip into the cup and that kind of sets the gauge just about right. Now set your gas flow to the recommended low setting standard. Now I did do a deep dive episode where I went into the four different TIG cups I use for every single metal. It also has the general rules and settings and lots and lots of details if you wanna check that out or whatever the case is. Now I did get asked about if gas is still needed to do a spot weld. And the answer is yes, you still need gas and you still need 100% argon because this is still a TIG welder. In fact, the reason for cutting the slits is so that the gas can escape when we go to weld it. Now let's practice a little bit and try to see if we can dial in these settings here. This sheet metal is 20 gauge steel from weldmetalsonline.com and it's a good average thickness to practice on. Ideally, we want the process of each spot weld to happen really quick. So I'm going to set the machine pretty high for 20 gauge at 130 amps. If you're using a trigger switch, set it to 2T operation with no up or down slope time. Now you wanna set the cup flat against the metal and smash that foot pedal to the floor. Once you see the back side of the joint glowing, you're done. Take your foot off the pedal or let go of the switch. Once the part cools down, try and tear it apart. If you got it just right, you will have to physically destroy it, which I will show you how much effort that takes to break one of these at the end of the video. But if you didn't get it right, these are the two most common reasons why. If you blew a hole through it, you either had way too many amps or you waited too long to terminate the arc. If it doesn't hold at all or it breaks off too easily, then you either didn't have enough amps or you didn't wait long enough. You should definitely try a few different techniques until you get it just right and then practice that until you have it perfect every single time. If you need a clamp to go with your setup, you can easily make one out of a cheap set of locking pliers and some bar stock. First, you wanna cut four pieces of stock to about four inches or 100 millimeters in length. Sharpen the bar about halfway and leave a blunted tip instead of rounding it completely. Now, I used a cordless drill to make this quicker, but you know, you can easily do it by hand. You know, just, it just takes a little bit longer. Now we're gonna pad some silicon bronze onto the end of each bar stock. This silicon bronze is also from weldmetalsonline.com. 
Now, one of the main ingredients in silicon bronze is copper, which is soft and reduces scratching of materials. Now, here we're going to TIG braze the silicon bronze to the steel ends with a generous amount of buildup. Now, brazing is kind of like a hot metal glue, if you will. We use the arc from the TIG torch to heat up whatever metals we want to stick together, but we don't actually liquefy them. We only liquefy the silicon bronze. The arc is just a heat source, kind of like a flame from a gas torch. So when you're brazing, you typically use less amperage from your machine and you concentrate most of the arc on the existing silicon bronze so you can combine all of it. It pretty much just sticks to the top of it. So when you finish patting the tips up and they cool down, run back over to the grinder and round over the silicon bronze ends. Next, you want to clamp them in the vise and smack it with the BFH until they hit about 90 degrees. You want to do this at roughly an inch or about 25 millimeters or so from the end of the silicon bronze end. So since these are super cheap pliers, I have no idea what they're actually made out of. So the best way to attach this steel to these pliers is going to be with silicon bronze. Now just like patting the ends of the prongs, we're only going to use the arc from the torch as a source of heat to melt only the silicon bronze filler. The goal again is not to liquefy the base materials. But if you do liquefy the base material, you might be okay, but it may cause a failure because the construction of the three different metals may not combine and play nicely together. Now once I had these four prongs brazed on, I stuck them into the vise, heated them back up, and bent them backwards to allow for a little bit more space inside of that throat. So good clearance is a good thing. The alignment of this may be uh, a little off because this thing rocks around. I mean, they are super cheap pliers, but technically doesn't matter because when you uh, grip it all down, it still has two points of contact. The whole reason for rounding over the prongs and using prongs instead of flat steel in general is for clamping to radius or uneven surfaces. And with the tungsten sucked up into the cup a little bit, you can still spot weld something that's on a radius or a bend or maybe even uneven. I really hope the information in this video helps at least a few of you out that are kind of interested in stuff like this. I mean, there's actually a lot you can learn from somebody if you just ask them. Kind of like asking the coaches over at weldcoach.com something specific that isn't necessarily what the whole lesson is about. Like me personally, I was asked to create a class specifically for the purpose of TIG welding pins into barrels, and that was actually a really fun class. It was possible to do. Other coaches have been asked for consultations for things like shop layout, setup, efficiency, organizing small spaces because not everybody has a large shop. I even recall one coach was requested to set up a class for finishing, like grinding and finish work instead of just sticking it all together. What about after all of it? There's a whole bunch of things that our coaches can help you out with in a live one-on-one -on -one class no matter where you're at out there. All you gotta do is let us know. And with that, I'll see you guys on the next episode.